Hello, and welcome to a Breaking It All Down Let's Play. I'm using my USB microphone I used for my standard episode recording this time, so hopefully my sound quality is a little better. Currently, as a minus side, I cannot hear the game. Um, if you didn't already know, I am recording my um, audio after the gameplay footage. So, yeah, there's that. You seem a little detached from what's going on. That's, that's why. So... We're currently going through and seeking out a little hidden area here. To get an extra seal to open out that other area that's closed before. Most games, most levels in the game don't have little puzzles like this in terms of there's a seal you can only get through by getting something from a hidden area or a bonus item. Um, they have it here. Normally what they do is there'll be like a hidden area off the map that you can't find normally, but if but you'll go by it, you'll see life bars for some of the enemies there, and you'll be able to basically just kind of crash through the wall, take out those enemies, and get something for it. Um, those crests I picked up just now. What those do is basically they, um, for a limited period of time, as I mentioned on there, they give you bonuses to like damage dealt or damage resistance or various other useful things to help you get the game better. Now, I'll be going to treasure vault, treasure vault proper later in the in this level. But for here, it's just rip through these guys for reasons that are not clear. Well, if he is, then you find that seal. Anyway. So, yeah, um, anyway, I'll be a little more detached than usual this time because, well, I have no audio. One thing that, that bears mentioning here, um, with this game is, you may, you may have noticed, I got knocked down there, and the enemy went for an, a bonus damage move by thrusting down on me while I was prone. That sounded slightly wrong. Um... You can't do that yourself. That's one of the things which enemy guys can do and you can't. There are no execution moves in here for taking out extra bad guys. Which I find kind of disappointing considering that, say, for example, the God of War series had already come out by this point. Um, God of War 1 and 2 had already come out for the PlayStation 2. Um, and I think it probably got an PSP game by then. And so they already introduced players to the concept of the execution move, or what have you, for dealing with prone or stunned enemies to let you get through the move of trigger. And in the case of God of War, I get a really flashy, gory move. Now, I understand not going for the, the gore here, just as well, you have a uh, teen rating on the game, and these guys are bleeding leaves as opposed to... Ah, uh, here we go. Here's the item we need to get to that seal. Um, bleeding leaves as opposed to, you know, blood. But still, been nice to do that to get, make it a little easier to get through enemies. But one of the obnoxious things with this game, kind of, is in order to get through certain combat situations or whatever, what they have you do is instead of actually, you know, um, you know, finding a chest or something like that, and have you just pick up an item, they will have the item spawn out of the blue once you get to the right area and kill everybody. It makes it actually kind of difficult to figure out where you need to go at some points. It's just kill everyone in the area, and if there's no one there to kill, find somewhere else, and hopefully you'll stumble upon the place they're looking for. Ah, uh, yes, you. And no, uh, rather than actually fighting us, you're going to sick boss monsters. Well, boss monsters. You're going to sick the next level of mooks against us. These guys, who we're about to see after this cutscene. Once we go from this, here, yeah, here we go. Now we're introduced to the real demon warriors, or samurai, or demon samurai, or whatever. These are the guys who give you XP. You absorb by the crystal, the crystal breaks, and now they're demon samurai with crystals in them. And those crystals are what give you XP. You, those, those chunks of crystal basically get you your XP. So let's get started. As a year old, you see, we get a brief look at it there. Here we go. We have this combo meter building up here, with a multiplier based on how much damage you do without getting hit. You have to heal up here for a second. Oh, 
So these guys, if you do your, um, if you do a, uh, a movie move here and get 100% for the button presses, this, you'll get a healing on this way. As far as your combo multiplier building up, yeah, it's basically just how many hits you get in a row over a period of time. And it builds up slightly faster based on the buoy meter and how much you've leveled up your swords with the, with the experience points you get from killing these guys. And those up those little head crystal thingies. They come out based on how much damage you dealt. So don't deal enough damage before you kill them. They come out. If you do enough damage and get a good overkill or close death combo or whatever on them, then they don't come out in your fun. As it is, frankly, as far as the Kalui stuff goes for these guys, I kind of prefer if once you, um, um, additionally doing a Kalui combo and hitting 100% would also refill your health as well as addition to giving you a healing item. Or at least even just you hit a Kalui Kui combo, Kui combo, it refills your health, and then if you get 100% you're healing out. There's some way to encourage you to actually use the Kui, and set up a risk-reward relationship ratio there, as opposed to just saving it up. Anywho, new weapon for, for Ben K, which I'm probably not going to use much. And now we get to party member numero tres. I think that's San, the Japanese name. And we have the treasure section. This is the sort of this is the space behind the door to the treasure chamber. And here's our new character with a even less practical costume, Shizuka. She has a grappling hook ability. So basically, she and Yoshitsune are the two guys with the main traversal abilities. Ben K has the barrier smashing ability. Um, I really don't do that much in combos in this game with the um, with the, the grappling hook. Again, it knocks him down. You can't add with the lighter enemies, so you can't you know hit them when they're down. And she's more useful at range. So it's not like you can draw yourself in and then Oh yes, and I also she cartwheels. Also because she's so light, um, her knockback is really far when she gets hit with a heavy attack. Yeah, I, I feel like the grappling hook draw in thing is meant to set up juggles or combos, something like that, but it really doesn't work. So yeah, smash boxes, get herbs, run around, eventually climb out of this little sunken area. Here we go. There needs to be a way to click that do to click the uh, door larger, door larger, map larger. To make it easier to get in or out. So yeah, um. Not really good about getting a save points over here. As point, she has, yeah, this weapon is not particularly effective. She gets a more higher damage weapon, but I've always found these games, I uh, found generally that the default weapon really works kind of best. This is the animation here. For a stronger weapon, it feels weaker. While it has more damage, it's the animation, the attack animations don't quite work right when it misses stuff. Alrighty then, so I've um, caused a new weapon to spawn. Let's get over there. Yeah, um, Tuzuka doesn't have the climb up a climb up stuff animation. I guess it's um, that Yoshitsune has. I guess it's unladylike. Oh, we're going to get another save point up ahead that we can use shortly. 
But first, another cutscene. こんなところにも美しい娘がいると。And this guy. 福原とは大違いだ。誰？ No idea which member of the Hickey clan he's supposed to be. He apparently has an eye patch. He also appears to be a womanizer, though he doesn't have the vein thing going on that most womanizing guys, villain guys do. The whole, you know, Vega from Street Fighter thing. Oh, Vega with Balrog. <laughs> oh yeah, um, he does that close-in melee thing with the, the chakra in this sequence. You can't do that. Your animations are not very based on how close you are to your target. The, which is a pain in the butt. There's kind of a bit of stuff like that with the fan blade weapon, the dancing blade, as they call it. But it's not particularly effective, and ultimately found, as, as this cutscene does kind of show off, and I'll give him credit for using this as a way to subconsciously teach the character, teach the player. Um, Shizuka is not particularly useful close in. She's very good for keeping enemies at a distance, close up close. So yeah, um, another problem with this grab ability thing is. It is it it is a pain in the ass to try to grab one of the targets that are outside of your field of view. Oh, by the way, it sent us back over without giving us a chance to go. Okay, same point was on this side. Never mind. Anyway, probably I should call this an episode. It's been about 10, 15, it, it's a little over ten minutes. This is a good place to call it an episode. And so next time we get more Shizuka. And hopefully she will get to join our merry band of heroes, and so I can get to use somebody who actually deals more damage. Later.